Now I am going to discuss an echocardiogram in rheumatic mitral stenosis. The typical features in rheumatic mitral stenosis will be demonstrated. And after that, I will also show a normal mitral wall echocardiogram in cross section for comparison. Echocardiogram in rheumatic mitral stenosis is very important because you can assess the wall morphology associated abnormalities like left atrial enlargement, whether there is other wall lesion and whether right ventricle is enlarged and pulmonary hypertension. All this information is very important in deciding whether the metal wall has to be replaced or whether it can undergo balloon mitral valvotomy or PTMC. So this is the parasternal long axis view in echocardiogram right ventricle, interventricular septum, posterior wall of left ventricle. Ascending aorta with the two aortic cusps are seen. Non-coronary and left coronary cusps are seen. This is a cross section of descending aorta. Aortic leaflets are okay. Probably there is minimal thickening. And this is the anterior mitral leaflet showing doming in diastole. There is a hockey stick like appearance and in diastole this would almost go and touch the interventricular septum. So the opening is grossly restricted. The wall leaflets are thick and fibrotic and you can see dense calcification here. And this is the posterior leaflet. Normally posterior leaflet should move posteriorly during diastole so that posterior leaflet will be here, anterior leaflet will be here with a wide open mitral wall orifice but here it is not seen very narrow orifice seen then there is calcification and dense fibrosis probably this wall would not be suitable for mitral balloon mitral wall otomy may require uh, replacement but those things you will also like to assess calcification by fluoroscopy because fluoroscopy is better to know calcification than plain uh, echocardiography then uh, you would also like to know whether there is significant mitral regurgitation before deciding on balloon wall otomy versus uh, uh, mitral wall replacement and this is the color doppler image you can see the turbulent jet multicolor mosaic jet across the mitral wall then in left atrium you should look for thrombus also from the parasternal long axis view, we move on to the parasternal short axis view. This circular cross section is that of the left ventricle and this region is the right ventricle. This is the anterior mitral leaflet, again grossly thickened, partly calcified. Posterior mitral leaflet, grossly thickened, fibrotic and there are specks of calcium seen. This is the anterolateral commissure, it's the lateral portion of the left ventricle. This is the medial portion. So this is the posteromedial commissure of the mitral wall. You can see that both are fused. In the hallmark of uh, rheumatic mitral stenosis is commissural fusion. There is now another type of mitral stenosis, especially in the elderly, uh, very elderly, and in those with uh, chronic renal failure, there is calcific mitral stenosis that is mainly involving the mitral annulus, mitral annular calcification. In those conditions, there won't be commissural fusion. The management is different from that of rheumatic mitral stenosis. Calcific annular mitral stenosis will not respond to balloon mitral valvotomy. So that's a different condition. It has a poor prognosis also because it occurs in the very elderly. This is classical rheumatic mitral stenosis becoming less common nowadays as the incidence of rheumatic fever has come down. This image from another case is shown for demonstrating the planimetry of mitral valve area. If you sketch out the mitral valve area like this, the measurement will be given by the echocardiography computer software. So from this you will assess the severity of mitral stenosis. For assessing this, you should take a full circle, smallest full circle in the cross section which is available. 
if you don't take a full circle it could be a different level rather than the uh, uh, metal wall level so you should take smallest full circle in serial cross sections for assessing metal wall area by planimetry there are other methods for assessing metal wall area like uh, pressure half time this is an image of normal metal wall for comparison you can see that the leaflets are quite thin anterior and posterior metal leaflets and uh, the scallops of the posterior leaflets can be seen p1 p2 p3 p1 is the is near the anterolateral commissure and p3 near the posteromedial commissure corresponding to this anterior leaflets can also be divided into three regions though there are no definite scallops there like a1 a2 and a3 this is the apical four chamber view in rheumatic metal stenosis you can see the leaflets both anterior and posterior leaflets are grossly thickened and left atrium is dilated there is no obvious thrombus seen in the left atrium then when there is severe pulmonary hypertension there can be dilatation of the right ventricle hypertrophy of the right ventricle and right atrial enlargement in this view you can assess the mitral wall gradient by putting a doppler here and by putting a doppler cursor here you can assess the tricuspid regurgitation jet and pulmonary pressures that is you get the right ventricular systolic pressure from tricuspid regurgitation jet from which you can calculate the pulmonary pressure by adding right atrial pressure which is usually around 10 So this is the apical four chamber view in rheumatic mitral stenosis